OK, and I'll take a second to get that started. Um, but the kind of the second thing uh, I wanted to ask folks is because of the bandwidth with um, Teams meetings, uh, I was going to ask if most of you can turn off your cameras, except for a few of you that might be um, presenting or introducing yourself just to help with the bandwidth. Um, and then again, if you can stay muted um, for most of this to help with uh, kind of the background noise. Um, again, you're welcome to unmute um, when we're kind of in between kind of a couple slides and ask questions. Um, let me see here. Um, and again, you're welcome to post questions in the chat um, or there's the little um, option to raise your hand. Um, please feel free to do that at any point. Um, Tracy's on the call or on the webinar as well, and she'll be kind of helping us monitor that to make sure that we're kind of stopping periodically to address those questions. Um, so feel free to do that. OK, so uh, I just thought we'd go and, and do some introductions. Um, so uh, I'm Christy Spoon. I'm with the Oregon Department of Energy, uh, the school's program lead, uh, and I'll go ahead and let uh, Tracy introduce herself and then we'll go to Christine and Colin. Hi, I am Tracy Richardson and I work with the um, Department of Energy with a um, public purpose charge schools program and I assist Christy and work with a lot of the utility data. Um, so um, I am available for questions and help with this as well. And hi, I'm Christina Skellinger and I'm with the Energy Trust of Oregon's existing buildings program. And I am the I help with uh, I help uh, customers, uh, public K through 12 customers in every part of Oregon except Southern Oregon and Eastern Oregon. And I'm Colin Podelnik. I'm uh, also with Energy Trust's existing buildings program. I work with school districts and I cover everything that Christina doesn't. So Southern Oregon and Northeast Oregon. <laughs> Um, and I'm not sure. I don't. I don't see his name. But um, is Brian Morrison on the call or on the webinar? Oh, there yeah, you I'm are. Here. Great. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Brian Morrison, and I'm with Energy Trust of Oregon as well. And uh, I'm your dedicated uh, lighting specialist for um, schools. So please let us know how we can help out within your lighting needs. Happy to help you guys. Consider any projects you're working on. Discuss technology. Just let us know we can help. OK, great. So basically, if you need help with something, all of us are here. That's the main point. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. all here kind of helping everybody and get through all these projects. So reach out to any of us and we'll connect, connect you to the right people if we're not the right person. But OK, so um, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, again, the, the um, webinar is about the Public Purpose Charge Schools Program. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off. Um, Public Purpose Charge Schools Program um, 2022 Outreach. Um, and again, we uh, previously did uh, the outreach in person. Uh, this year or this time, not able to go out in person, but hopefully we'll see a few more faces uh, later in the year. But um, let's see here if I can get this. To... There we go. And again, we did uh, introductions, so I'll kind of skip past this. And there you go, Christina. Great. And so for Energy Trust of Oregon, um, we uh, Energy Trust provides uh, incentives for those that fall within these utilities. So this is sort of a utility map to show what areas. It's uh, uh, Portland General Electric, Pacific Power, Northwest Natural, Cascade Natural Gas, and Avista Gas Territories. Yeah, and we this map is just great because it gives you kind of the perspective of all of the territories, even though um, public purpose charge schools program is only a couple of the territories, but. Mm -hmm. OK, so we kind of wanted to go through a couple of these um, items again. A number of you that have gone through these um, webinars have seen some of these slides, have heard some of this information. Again, part of it is just to reiterate um, some of the main points and again to um, kind of show a little bit of the differences between 1149 and Energy Trust. Um, but I'll go through 1149. Um, the uh, eligible school districts are going to be in the Pacific Power and PGE territories. Um, again, those are going to be your educational facilities within those territories. Uh, 1149 funds 
uh, and I should say actually public purpose charge uh, is the kind of the reference to the charge. Um, we have been calling it Senate Bill 1149 funds for a number of years. People kind of have heard of it in both ways, public purpose charge funds or 1149 funds. So again, we kind of have it referenced both ways in the PowerPoint. So uh, Senate Bill 1149 funds are distributed each month to the eligible school districts. Um, and it's all based on those eligible facilities in the territory. And then um, the student counts associated to those um, facilities. And then for the 1149 program, again, energy measures um, that are considered to be eligible for the program um, are, at, they need to be calculated, analyzed, um, and have some sort of energy savings associated to those measures to be eligible. Uh, again, we'll get into a few other project types in just a little bit, but uh, energy measures have to have that energy calculation, that savings. Uh, Senate Bill 1149 funds, um, again, the reimbursement is based on, uh, or the max reimbursement is based on the measure savings times by the measure life. Um, and again, uh, some of the projects can pay up to 100% um, and some are just again going to be capped based on that max reimbursement. Uh, and then Christina, do you want to go through those? Sure. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, we're uh, Pacific Power, PGE, Northwest Natural Cascade, and Avista Territories. Um, we have three different type of, of incentive processes. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more detail later, but there are standard incentives. Um, those are, uh, you know, equipment that you're replacing, boilers, hot water heaters. Um, we have just basically a prescriptive amount that you would receive in terms of incentive. There's lighting incentives uh, um, that are, again, specific to our lighting program. And then custom incentives are everything that um, isn't included in standard lighting. Those could be uh, controls projects, large HVAC projects, um, that kind of thing. Our funding is based on uh, cost effectiveness and energy savings. So uh, our, our funds can pay up to 65 to 75% of total project costs. But again, that funding is based on how much you know, the type of project you're doing and how much energy savings we would see in those projects. Go ahead, Christy. Uh, let's see here. OK, uh, so for uh, for 1149 uh, schools program, again, one of the things I kind of mentioned was that there's a few additional projects. Um, the statute kind of uh, has had some changes over time, but basically you first uh, have to do energy audits within those educational facilities or fleet audits um, for the eligible districts. Uh, and then again, after that, once you've had those kind of audits, uh, you can do the energy efficiency measures and then the other types of what I, I call projects, even though it's not exactly a project, is to use the funds to purchase a zero emissions vehicle, and that includes a bus. Uh, and then the last item on the list is, again, um, to use the funds to uh, purchase and install an electric vehicle charger. So the, the last couple options we have more slides um, on because that's kind of newer to the program, but um, so I just wanted to mention that. And then Senate Bill 1149 funds, again, are considered a reimbursement. Um, the funds go directly to the dress, uh, districts, as I mentioned before. Those funds are to be held into an account uh, until the district does one of these eligible kind of expenditures projects. And then it's considered a reimbursement once we get all of that final cost detail. Um, and then Odo sends a little email saying, that you can then reimburse yourself. Um, so again, we'll kind of go into a little bit more detail about each of these in, in, a coming, in some upcoming slides. Chris. And on the energy trust side, um, we can fund energy projects for any type of facility. So uh, where SB 1149 uh, couldn't fund projects maybe in an admin building, um, uh, we, we may be able to. Um, so you can there are still energy trust incentives available. I will also say because I know SB 1149, uh, there's some changes with, you know, including buses and electric vehicle charging stations. Energy Trust of Oregon does not provide incentives for those types of projects. So we're strictly as related to the building. Um, 
and our the way our process works, we just sort of cut you a check. So at the end of the project, um, once you you submit your invoice and we approve the project, we'll we just send you a check in the mail. Okay. Um, okay, so we kind of went through some of the existing kind of details of the program, and now we're going to kind of talk about some of the changes. Um, again, some of this stuff uh, most of you may have heard over over time, but um, the newest changes um, to the public purpose charge is that uh, in the past it used to be 3% on the utility bills for the customers within PGE and Pacific Power Territory, and then school districts would get a 10% of that big pot. Uh, effective January 1, 2022 from the House Bill 3141, uh, they changed some percentages, so the, the public purpose charge went from 3% to 1.5%, uh, but they changed some of the allocations to the individuals. So one of the larger kind of um, percentages in the older um, in the older program went away to a different way of processing or, or collecting those, but school districts will now get 20%. So in theory, it's going to be relatively similar to the other um oh hold on one second uh it looks like uh sorry about that it looks like oh yeah good i thought maybe the recording had stopped or something sorry about that um so uh, again school districts are going to get relatively similar amounts again it's not going to be exact because these are all percentages these are um just based on the revenues but when you go from three percent to one and a half percent and then again, previously school districts got 10% of the 3% and now 20%. It's going to be very similar. Uh, I did include the other percentages for the other funds that'll, that are still part of the public purpose charge, but uh, I mostly am focusing on the school districts. I just wanted to let you know you'll want to reshare your screen so we can see your slides again. Oh, I'm sorry. OK, I that's think that was the, the little glitch we had there. OK. Do you see it now? Yeah. Looks great. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. <laughs> okay, um, so again, uh, the percentage in the pie chart that hopefully you can see now um, will make more sense. Um, but the, as part of this change in uh, January 1, 2022, um, the House bill actually extended the program for 10 additional years. So now the program goes through January, um, January 1, 2036. Um, let's see here and I'll go to the next slide. So what this means for the school districts that are eligible, again, it's 10 years uh, extended through the January 1, 2036. Um, school districts, as I mentioned on the last slide, will receive similar revenues um, as previously. So again, you shouldn't see significant changes, um, although there is maybe a little bit of a bump in the road in the January revenue payments, um, that, that might have been a little bit different, but again, kind of moving forward, it should be relatively similar to what you guys have received in the past. Um, and then school districts, um, they continue to receive those monthly allocations. So just like the same up to the, the new end date. Um, the main point on this slide that I wanted to make sure that people understood is that for some districts, we used to consider them spent out. Um, and that meant that they had spent the funds that we thought they were going to get through January 1, 2026. Um, most of those districts are now no longer spent out because again, of that, with that 10 years of additional funds, um, they'll be able to use some additional funds for more projects. So I just kind of want to mention that if at one point your district was sent an email saying you were spent out, it's very likely that you are no longer spent out. And you can work with um, Odo with me to kind of look at those dollar amounts again. OK, Christina. So uh, Energy Trust of Oregon has a few changes for 2022. Um, we had some uh, uh, pretty significant caps on incentives for 2021. So we've increased uh, those caps for projects for this year. Um, for lighting, that incentive cap has increased to $20,000 per site. Um, and for other projects outside of lighting, um, HVAC controls, insulation boilers, whatever the other mechanical systems, um, those caps have increased to $250,000 per site. So we have some pretty significant increases to the cap for this year. 
Um, in addition, um, for lighting, there is a new instant discount offering. Uh, this is a program that allows you to go to a distributor like uh, Platt Electric, for example, and you purchase uh, lights directly from Platt uh, and earn an instant discount based on the Energy Trust incentive at the time of the purchase. So it's a it's it's a, a it's exciting new program because if you've got just your onesie twosie projects, you want to buy a handful of lights or a dozen lights, um, you can do so and receive an energy trust incentive. Um, you can also receive SB 1149 funding and get approved for those dollars through this program. And I'll give you an overview of how that works as well a little bit later on. I do also want to to let you know that for um, uh, our program, our, our Energy Trust program, uh, in the near future, we're expecting there to be um, some increased incentives. Um, I can't uh, provide what those are at this point in time, but just be on the lookout. We'll be sending out emails to folks to provide an overview of what those uh, bonus incentives might look like um, in, the, in the coming months. Okay. Um, so this, I just kind of wanted to point out again, uh, because this this PowerPoint is going to be available as a PDF um, to school districts or out on our, on our website. Um, for those that uh, might still need to do uh, kind of that whole building audit through the program, uh, we still have our uh, list of qualified energy audit firms and the 1149 audit report templates out on our website. So again, I just kind of wanted to mention that for those that um, might still need a whole building audit in their facilities. OK, so I'm going to do a couple slides on the fleet audits and the um, zero emissions vehicles information. But again, I put links in here so that again, you guys can check out our website to get some of the spreadsheets and the details. And um, basically we um, because again, the first step is to complete that fleet audit. Um, there is a spreadsheet on our website that's available for school districts to fill out. Uh, again, we kind of created it so that hopefully school districts can do it on their own, um, but you're also welcome to work with the, an, another firm to try to help fill that out if you need any assistance, or you can contact Odo and we can help you with some of your questions on that. Um, the second step, or well, I should say you complete the fleet audit and submit it to Odo. And then uh, the second step is to, there's a couple different forms that are out on our website. Um, one that separates uh, for light duty vehicles and chargers. And then the second is for electric buses and the bus chargers. Um, so you choose which one based on um, the vehicle type, I guess, if you're looking at a vehicle. If you're just looking at a charger, then you would just uh, use the light duty vehicle charging form. Um, and just fill out the information in that form that pertains to what you're looking at. Um, again, once you fill that out, you submit it to Odo. Uh, the third step is again, we just review all that information, making sure that the forms are correct, the, the fleet audit details, all that is in there. Once we've done that, we'll send kind of the typical email or notice to the school district, letting you guys know that we've reviewed it and it's at least eligible for you to move forward with the purchase, so that you have some uh, kind of uh, email or documentation from us saying that you can do that. Um, and then and and or the eligible portions of 1149 funds that could be applied to those to those items. Uh, and again, the last step is once you've done all that, you've purchased the bus, you've installed the chargers, whatever it may be, or a light duty vehicle, um, then you're following up with Odo to submit your final cost information. This is very similar to the projects, any energy measures. Again, you go through the project, you do the installation, you submit the final cost documentation, um, and then we'll send an email uh, approving the 1149 portions of funds. Uh, and then the next slide, I just wanted to kind of go through a couple uh, amounts for each of these. Again, um, with energy measures, you have that SB 1149 max reimbursement based on the savings um, for these fleet or for the for the vehicles and the chargers. We've got kind of this approved up to amount, um, same as same as a max reimbursement, but um, we just have this set amounts in here for chargers for level one and two chargers. Again, it could be full cost or it again, minus any grants or uh, any other incentives or anything else that you get for that. Um, DC fast chargers, you just need to work with Odo on those. Um, we'll re review those individually. Uh, and again, the vehicles, the dollar amounts are up here. Uh, the kind of the common thing we've been hearing is for the um, 
school buses, the electric school buses. Now again, we can approve up to these dollar amounts, um, but it, again, it's all based on what other grants or incentives that you're receiving and if the district has the funds. Again, some districts are smaller districts. You may not even have these kind of amounts even by the end of the program. So again, these are just kind of the up to amounts that we can approve um, through that process. Again, if you submit that information to Odo and we'll work with you individually for any of that. So reach out if you have any questions about those. OK, uh, and Christina. Great, so I'm just going to provide an overview of our uh, uh, energy trust process. So in order to receive outside of the electric charging stations and the buses, um, in large part, you can receive uh, be approved through SB 1149 program program by using the energy trust process. So we want to give you kind of an overview of what that looks like. Uh, again, we have these three different types of incentives that I'll walk through. Um, standard incentives are incentives like, again, like a boiler. There's a list there, boiler, hot water heater, insulation, steam traps. Um, they don't require pre-approval. You complete the application once the project's complete. That said, I um, would very much recommend that you reach out to confirm that whatever you're purchasing meets our requirements. So we have certain efficiency requirements. Um, and uh, if if I don't take a look at it, it's I've had customers, you know, install the wrong boiler uh, and then be upset when they don't receive the energy trust incentive. So please feel free to send over um, whatever it is you're looking to do and I can uh, make sure that it, it meets the requirements. There's also uh, lighting, um, so that requires pre-approval if you're not doing that discount lighting program uh, process, and we would have to complete a lighting tool. Um, it's basically a spreadsheet where you fill out what the existing lights look like and what you're proposing to install, um, and, and, and that has to be pre-approved before you're, you complete your project or start your project, excuse me. Same goes with custom. These require a study. So let's do, for example, if you're doing a controls project, um, we pay for and procure um, an engineer to complete a study for us to figure out what that project is going to save in terms of energy. So that all has to be done, that study, which can be take up to six months of time. That study uh, must be completed before you procure equipment and start construction. Uh, we typically see for projects like controls projects and HVAC projects, folks talking to us in the fall before projects that they'd like to do in the in the following summer, just to get that process started and going um, early enough to complete the study in time. Go ahead, Christy. Okay. So the the process between our two programs for these standard incentives, again, these don't require pre-approval, but as an example, let's say you're installing a boiler. Um, you would install that boiler, uh, complete the energy trust paperwork, and I can help you do that. Uh, once the, the, the application is completed and submitted to energy trust, we send all that documentation to Odo for you. So you don't have to worry about sending that paperwork over. We will do that for you. Odo then reviews the project paperwork and will send you uh, how much you're eligible for in terms of SB 1149 dollars. Uh, uh, we then, uh, Christy will send you an email that says you're approved to reimburse yourself for that amount, and then Energy Trust sends you a, a separate check in the mail. These projects cannot exceed a combined 100% of your project costs. That's that's the case for every single uh, track here. So uh, yes. that's why we have to we provide our Energy Trust incentive to Odo so that they can provide um uh the their funding up to 100% project costs okay for our custom process again this is for controls retro commissioning large scale hvac upgrades um energy trust procures and pays for a study um energy trust and odo we both review the study and approve the study and with that you'll get an email that says it's a called a, something a document called the funding summary, um, and, and it'll say here's how much here you know you're doing a controls upgrade for a hundred thousand dollars, and here's how much you're going to get 
an Energy Trust of Oregon incentive, and here's how much you're going to receive in SBLM $49. So you have a good understanding of what you'll receive from both programs at the end of that study. You then uh, move forward and complete the project, and you submit the invoices uh, to me or Colin. Uh, we process the application, send everything over to Odo for you, and you'll receive a second and final email from Odo saying, here's how much you can reimburse yourself in SB 1149, and we send you a check in the mail. Uh, and just one thing I wanted to kind of point out on this one too. Uh, in some cases, I get the invoices, uh, well, sorry, in most cases or all cases, I get the invoices that are submitted to Christina and Colin submitted to Odo. Um, but there may be follow up that we have um, about some of the invoice details um, that I'll send directly to the school district um, because sometimes uh, Energy Trust doesn't need certain things that we might need. So again, you might hear from me, but again, most of it is getting forwarded to me. It's just that I made a need a little follow up on some of that information. Mm -hmm. So. OK. So lighting, we now have two different processes for lighting. We have that instant discount uh, that I mentioned before. I'll talk about that next. But for our sort of regular standard path lighting program, um, this does require uh, project pre-approval. So if you're doing an, uh, an LED upgrade, we would need to complete first and foremost a lighting tool before you purchase those lights and install them. Um, so uh, you complete the lighting tool. There are folks out there, um, lighting uh, contractors and consultants that can help you with that paperwork. And Brian is also available um, to assist if uh, um, you need, need help. Once we complete the lighting tool, we send that over to Odo on your behalf. Odo then reviews that paperwork and you're going to get a piece of paper that says, or an email that says, you know, hey, this is your lighting project. Here's how much it's estimated to cost. Here's how much you're going to get from Energy Trust, and, and here's how much you'd receive in SB 1149. Again, so you have an idea before you start the project of what you're going to receive between the two programs. You then move forward with the project, install the project, and then submit those, um, those invoices again to Energy Trust, uh, and those will get forwarded over to, to Oregon Department of Energy. Odo will then send that second email that says you're approved to reimburse yourself um, X amount of dollars, and then Energy Trust uh, sends you a check in the mail. Okay, there you go. For the, the instant discount process, uh, it do, this does not require pre-approval if it's under $2,500. So if you are expecting to, to go to Plaid and buy a significant number of lights, you should let us know ahead of time if you think it's gonna exceed $2,500. If it doesn't, um, then this is this is our process. You would purchase the lights uh, as an example from Platt. You would receive that instant discount from Energy Trust. So from your perspective, you're just going to to the counter, you buy the lights, and you're done in terms of Energy Trust. We receive that in, that paperwork from the distributor, and we send all that over to Odo on your behalf. Um, our requirement at Energy Trust is that you. Uh, install the lights within 90 days of the sales date of those lights. So uh, presumably once you complete those or you purchase those lights, you install them um, and then you'll want to send any additional project costs to Odo for, for those projects. So when we send the information over to Odo, in this case, Christy will likely reach out because you might have other costs in, in addition to the lights. You might have somebody that you some labor or other types of design work, other types of costs that you would want included in your reimbursement in SB 1149. So Christy will reach out um, in, in those cases. So the Energy Trust incentive, this one is, isn't a check. This is just a discount at the uh, at the time of the sale, but Odo, you will receive an email from Odo about your, your SB 1149 reimbursement. I will also note that if you're using a contractor, to go and purchase these lights over the counter for you and install them, those contractors are required to pass along those savings to the district. So uh, something for you to double check in case you are using a contractor to use this method um, or this process is that that contractor is supposed to pass along those savings onto you. Yeah, uh, and one, uh, there's a question in there, but um, 
one thing I just want to point out again is we, at least through the 1149 program, we haven't had a school district go through this process that also connected with 1149. So please forgive me. The first couple might be a little bit um, just trying to get through that process and make sure we have all the documentation. I may have to follow up just to make sure we get a little bit more of that um, or that we're seeing everything that we need to for this process. So again, just if you're the first couple, I'll just say you might see a couple emails from us and um, but we'll get through it. Um, and again, it's really just to, to get used to this newer process because again, it's that instant discount um, up front that could help with those again, smaller uh, lighting projects. So into uh, the question that was was up there. Yeah, the distributors are are sending reports to Energy Trust on who, you know, who is purchasing these lights, how many lights they've purchased. So we should have that information um, automatically sent to us. That said, uh, it doesn't hurt to double check. So if you are you, you move through this process and you want to double check, you can feel free to reach out to to us to to confirm that uh, those lights that it's a discount offering was provided for that particular project. But it should be automatic. OK, let's go. OK, um, before we get started on this real quick, I just want to see, was there any other questions um, about any of the previous slides on the process um, that would give people a chance to unmute for a moment? Anybody? OK, OK, great. Um, Christina? Yeah, so here's an example, a couple of examples of how we combine the funding so you have a better understanding of how it works. The first um, example is when the project cost, so we can't exceed uh, either uh, our, our combined incentives cannot exceed either the SB 1149 max reimbursement or sorry, or 100% project costs. So here's an example. Here's a controls for upgrade project. It's $250,000. SB 1149 can provide up to $150,000 and the energy trust incentive is $50,000. So in that case, you're going to get you're going to max out both. You're going to get $50,000 from energy trust, $150,000 from SB 1149 for a total of $200,000 between two programs. So your net cost is $50,000. Let me know if there are questions, and otherwise I'll go to the next one. For lighting, in this case, the project cost is actually less than what SB 1149 um, and Energy Trust can offer. So the, the estimated cost here is $75,000. SB 1149 can reimburse up to $150,000, and Energy Trust is providing $25,000 in this example. You're going to get $25,000 in Energy Trust of Oregon dollars. You're going to get only 50,000 of SB 1149, even though you are eligible for up to 150. And that's because you're capped at 100% project costs. So combined, you're going to get $75,000 between two programs for a net cost to the district of $0. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, some of these uh, kind of images are a little bit fuzzy, but we just wanted to kind of show you a couple images real quick. Um, Christina mentioned the funding summary document. So if you're going through that custom path, um, you'll get a document um, that is uh, the Energy Trust and SB 1149 funding summary, and it includes the measure, it includes the estimated cost, the max reimbursement for the program, the Energy Trust estimated incentive. So all this stuff is to provide it to you um, that you can see the 1149 amounts have been reviewed and, and entered into the database, things like that. Um, so you should get that from Christina or Colin because we work with them, send it to them, um, and you'll get that uh, when the, the, the study is completed. Uh, and then for some of the other measures, like the prescriptive measures or the lighting measures, when ODA reviews that or receives that information, we review it, we're adding those measures to the database. So the, the other document here is the notice of measure eligibility. And that's just to let you guys know that, that we have reviewed that project for the public purpose charge or Senate Bill 1149 funds, added the measures, 
And then again, there's kind of a, a table in here also referred to as funding summary, and it gives you that max reimbursement amount, the energy trust incentive amount, 1149 funds, things like that. So that again, this is um, giving you that information ahead if it's a lighting so that you can see if there's the dollar amounts that you need to move forward or in a prescriptive measure. Again, I still do this, um, but typically the prescriptive you're getting it after you've already done those. So you've already installed the boiler and then I get the paperwork, but I still have this information um, that I send to the school districts. So we just wanted to kind of make sure you guys know that that you're getting these so that it tells you that we have both looked at the information and and what those estimated costs would be. Oh, uh, let's see here. OK, so just a couple reminders for the 1149 schools program. I know most of you hear from either me or Tracy um, at least once a year, if not multiple times. So um, but there's annual reporting for the 1149 program. Um, the utility bills for eligibility, that's once a year. We get one copy of an electric bill for each of your eligible facilities or schools so that we can determine that eligibility. Uh, and then for um, once a year, again, we ask that you uh, enter or upload your monthly energy usage and cost data for your facilities that are considered eligible. Again, there's a way to upload it or you can manually enter it, um, but it needs to be entered once a year. And then the 1149 account balance. And again, we get a lot of questions about this, especially from those that are either spent out or don't have any money in their account because they're reimbursing those old projects. But in theory, if the district is receiving that money each month from the utilities, you deposit it into an account. And if you're reimbursing those previously done projects, the ones that we've sent an email to you saying, you're now eligible, you can reimburse yourself. Uh, again, those funds, in theory, you can either transfer them out of that account as soon as you get that monthly allotment, or you can transfer it out at the end of the year or whatever it works for the district. Um, but we ask once a year for the district to send us what your account balance is. And that's just so that we can kind of gauge to make sure that we're, the, the amounts are kind of lining up to what we think they are. Um, we found a few school districts that didn't realize they were still owed for old projects because of some of this information. But um, anyway, so feel free to ask us questions about that if you have any. Um, the last couple items are just reporting as needed. Again, as you complete projects, um, again, we get a lot of that data from Christina and Colin um, when projects are completed with the final cost. But again, you guys uh, were we're trying to capture as much as possible, but again, you guys can reach out to Odo and let us know when you've completed projects. Um, and then that way we can just make sure that we've gotten it, that we've entered it and all that. Um, the school facility changes or renovations data, and that's just we have a new kind of a um, section in the database that tracks um, when there's been a renovation or something in the database. So again, if you haven't sent us any of that, um, then Tracy likely is following up with you, but. Uh, the next is just another couple images to make sure that you've seen it. Um, the school's interactive database. Um, this is where all of the energy usage data is entered. All of the project cost data is entered. Uh, there's a few new features in here, or I don't know if it's features, I guess it's an old database, so it's like menu options, but for the fleet audits um, or the electric vehicle and charging measures um, for some of that data. So if you guys log in, you see a few new options you can go look at those check them out um, but again it's just for entering some of the new data related to fleet audits and electric vehicles and then kind of the last thing i wanted to point out is that there's a few new reports out there um, so on the main menu kind of towards the bottom and this is a screenshot that i uh i think it should be for a regular school district for what you guys might see but at the very bottom it says reports if you go there um, we've added some reports so that you can kind of um, export in a spreadsheet, completed projects data, um, energy usage data, some of the different data points that are in the database, you can export some of that for your own district. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, and last one, or well, last couple, Christina. Yeah. Yep, so uh, how to get started, uh, but uh, in order for Odo and Energy Trust to sort of work through this process together, um, we have to have a consent email from the district. We have that for most all districts at this point, um, but if we do not have one on file, 
uh, this item little two here, that, that's the verbiage, but basically it just says that Energy Trust can work with Odo directly on your behalf to share information and project information. Um, so you'll wanna, first and foremost, you can talk to uh, Christy at Odo or um, myself or Colin uh, to get started with the process. We may require this uh, email to come from you guys. Um, we have to work with Odo to verify uh, your school facility. So if you've got a project, we actually have to verify that um, you've completed a whole building audit through the Odo program first at any point during the program. And so uh, most if uh, most districts and most schools have been audited at some point. There are very few that have not, but we have run into that situation. So um, we'll need to verify before we can use our more or sort of simplified process um, that you've done a whole building audit at your facility. And then work with um, myself or Colin uh, on which uh, energy trust path we need to go through, whether it's a standard custom or lending process. And we'll, we'll sort of shepherd you through any of those processes. OK, so uh, we just wanted to provide a little bit more information about some upcoming events, and I will say the very first one on the list was actually yesterday, um, so it's not necessarily upcoming, but I wanted to leave it on there because we did a webinar um, about electric school bus um, funding options, uh, and it was recorded. So if anybody's interested in, in checking out the recording, please let me know. I believe this link over here where it's um, the business and government fleets page is where the recording will be posted. Um, so it's just to provide additional information about school bus electrification um, funding options with uh, the Department of Education, DEQ, um, and then a little bit about the public purpose charge funds. Uh, and then again, you'll see a couple of these webinars um, today, and we have a second one April 5th. It's the same webinar, just offered a second time. Uh, and then there's a school bus electrification technical webinar to go through um, kind of a technical tool and a guidebook that is available out on our website now for in, any of that information. And then, of course, we've got some actual school conferences coming up that are uh, from unless something changes, cross your fingers, nothing changes. They will be in person. Um, the, ba the bonds, ballots and um, buildings conference uh, I believe ETO is going to have a booth there. Um, Odo's not going to be present at that one, but as you know, Christina knows all this information. So Christina and Colin will both be there, or I assumed. Um, and then the OSMA and OASBA conference are coming up. So we put the dates out there again. As far as we know, they're still going to be in person. So look for that information. And then our contact information. So. Um, again, this is going to be available in the slides, um, so we wanted to make sure that uh, that you guys have all of our information um, and now is a great time for questions. So um, feel free to unmute or submit a question in the chat. Um, please let us know what kind of questions you guys have. Maybe there's also a raise the hand function. Um, so you oh, can yes. use that, and if you need help getting it unmuted. Yes. Anything? It's awfully quiet. This this is going to be great to be in person. See, it's a little quiet right now. <laughs> <laughs> when we see everybody in person, it'll be a little bit. We'll be able to see faces and and hands, but. Well, I have I mean, a question. Oh, yes. Um, how far back can we go? If we say we've started a couple projects, controls projects, um, just the beginning stages of replacing an old chiller. How do we go about kind of retroing back to, uh, to cross some of those bridges that we didn't get a chance to? Yeah. Uh, Christina, do you want to talk about that for ETO? Yeah. And then for so for bit? controls, you know, for, for a controls project, um, that would have required a study. So unfortunately, there's there's nothing we can do on the energy trust side. Um, there may be something you can do on the Odo side, Christy, if you want to. Yeah. So with uh, for 1149 um, program, again, we have to have a measure that's been analyzed. 
But again, a lot of school districts have um, done some sort of whole building audit or studies where you've looked at um, the facilities. So we would just for for these particular projects, we would want to know which facilities they're at the project, and then we can look up in the school's database to see if there was a previously analyzed measure. If there was a measure, then we can say there's a max reimbursement amount because it's based on the savings of that measure, uh, and then it can still move forward. But again, if it hasn't been analyzed through uh, an energy trust study or an 1149 audit report, once it starts moving forward and you've already broken ground, it's pretty difficult to get that data that's needed. Um, so uh, again, we would just be looking for whatever we can find that may have been previously analyzed for that. So I would just say reach out to me. Uh, is it Andy? Um, That's right. Mm -hmm. For which facilities uh, and or district and things like that, and we can look it up in the school's database. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, is there other questions? Uh, OK, there's a question. Uh, I'm wondering if we can place a claim for a windows project that we did last summer. So John, um, I would just need to know again which facility that was at um, and we can look and see if that facility had an, a, a windows measure previously analyzed. Again, some of the audits that we have in the 1149 program may be a little bit older, but for these kind of situations, if there's a measure, even if it's a little older, we can at least see what the reimbursement might be if there was a measure analyzed. And um, so again, just. Uh, oh, and it says uh, you're saying that you did have a previous audit that spelled it out. So yeah, we just need to know which facility. If you want to let me know, follow up with me, John, and let me know which facility um, <laughs> and we can look it up. I can I can give you that information as soon as I know which which school. So. Perfect. Yeah, Chris, Casey, yeah. Oh, sorry, Casey, go ahead. Um, um, I have a question concerning uh, the comment about um, posting upgrades to buildings instead. Um, I know that we did um, uh, provided a lot of information a couple of years ago. What type of updates are you looking for? Is it specifically if we add square footage? I'm sorry, I just didn't quite catch that. Yeah, sorry, I didn't go through uh, through that in a lot of detail, but yeah, there's just a little one kind of a or two fields that basically just I think at one point you guys have provided square footage um, for the each of the schools, the year built. So we just need to know if there's like a major renovation again that's more current. So um, again, I can look that up for you guys. Um, I think that was Sue that was talking, um, but we're just looking for again when there's a major change we want to note like what year the major change happened and maybe if it was like an additional square footage add or you know if something was demolished something like that we don't need to go into tons of detail it's very basic the data entry box is not that big so again just to highlight if there's a major change um, to square footage or structure not necessarily if you've done a couple projects because those would go into the project kind of level data. Does that help? I think Sue, we can probably follow up with you too to see if we've already got what we need, I think, for your district. No, that's perfect. That's kind of what I was expecting. Thank you. Okay, perfect. OK, and then Casey posted uh, some of our contacts in the comments box. So again, if you needed our email addresses, they're there. Um, and we will go ahead and um, save this PowerPoint as a PDF. Um, we can either email it out to participants or post it on our website and then share the link one way or the other. Um, but we can get this out to you guys. Um, and then again, we'll um, I believe we'll be posting a recording of the webinar, but um, we'll decide, you know, we've got the one in April as well. So I'm not sure if we'll post both of them. You probably don't need to see us talk the same presentation twice, but um, for anybody that needs the information, please let us know. Um, I also kind of wanted to say if there's anything, uh, any other kind of accommodations, um, if anybody needs 
the presentation um, in a different language or something like that, um, please reach out to me uh, and let me know uh, and we'll try to accommodate what we can. Um, again, if there's anything else, um, just please reach out. Uh, yep, OK, so I've got a couple emails saying please email a link. We will definitely email a link or the PDF so that you guys can have the PowerPoint. Yes. Perfect. Seeing lots of people wanting the PowerPoint, which is great because Christina and I talked a couple years ago, so some <laughs> of this is similar to a couple years ago. But. OK, so uh, if there's not a lot of other questions, um, please, I mean, just again, feel free to reach out to us uh, and we can address anything um, that you guys have, any questions that you guys have. And I've got a couple follow ups, um, but um, yes, we'll be in touch and I'll go ahead and uh, stop the recording and uh, we'll chat with you guys all again, hopefully soon at some of the in person conferences. OK. Thank you. OK, let's see if I can stop the recording.